Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today for another this and that video. And I want to get right to it and what I'm talking about today. So first thing I'm going to talk about is seeds, of course, because I'm so excited. My seedlings are coming along. And what I've started so far, I went ahead and planted the uh, Castelluto Genovese tomato, the Rio Grande Roma, the purple tomatoes. These are all the ones I saved from last year. And I'll show you how I did it, uh, where I put the slices on a paper towel and just let them dry. I'll go ahead and link to the video showing how I did that right up here. And, and then the other one from last year was these black Japanese ones here. And, and they're all coming up beautifully. And then the other two that I got what were new ones are the black brandy wine and they're doing excellent as are these free ones that I got and they are the black venissage. So uh, anyway, those are the tomatoes I got. And then for peppers, I'm doing several different peppers. I'm doing the uh, Santa Fe Grande. These are a hot pepper and they did really good for me a couple of years ago. And then I've got the Craig's Grande Jalapeno Pepper. And then another one is, I tried years ago and didn't do very good with it, but I'm hoping now that I'm getting a better grasp on how best to grow peppers in my area, I'm going to try the five, the Chinese five colored ones again because I think these would be fun. And these are also a hot pepper. And then as an experiment, um, those of you who may see Ellen Fisher in the chat, she's been following us since we first started and she had sent me a big jar of some of her hot peppers, green and red ones. And I don't know exactly what kind they are. I think she told me, but I forgot. However, I thought even though they were dehydrated, it I figured the seeds should still be good. So I saved some of the seeds out of there just to see what they would do and got them planted. And so far at the time that I'm shooting this video, none of the seeds are coming up. But don't forget to ask me in a comment down below because by the time you see it, they should be. Peppers are always way behind tomatoes, at least around here, when it comes to germinating and seeing them start to come up. Now the rest of these things are things I'm gonna be planting either starting uh, probably early April and or direct seeding out into the garden even later than that and some of this i talked about in my last video where i talked about seeds and i wasn't sure what to do about the squash because i want to try them all and then what dawned on me it's like well why not just plant a couple of each ones first and see how well they do i don't have to save the seeds from this year's harvest for next year, just make more sense to make the best use of my space, my limited space, trying various different new squashes to see which ones are gonna do best. And then the next year, focus on the ones that we like best and that do best and then save the seeds from those because we don't want them cross pollinating. And, and it's the next year that you gotta worry about it if you save the seeds and they've cross pollinated with each other you can end up with mutt squash and i really don't want to do that especially since i got the cherokee pumpkin seeds from danny and wanda at deep south homestead and then these ones were sent to me by one of my canadian subscribers she's always good at you know sending us neat little things and these are called a golden pippin acorn acorn squash and she made these sound really good and I know I love acorn squash anyway and they were bred to grow in an area much like ours very you know cold and wet and you know moderate temperatures so I'll be trying these for certain and thank you for those seeds by the way and you know who you are <laughs> and then the ones that Jen sent me because uh, I've recently heard James talking about it even from old school with the modern twist and he's got his channel out there I recommend you go check him out really great guy we've talked to him on the phone several times but he was talking about these recently too and Jen sent these from California and and other of our followers have commented on the Kusha so these are the ones I'm going to try along with the other ones that I bought new this year are the this uh, orange butternut typically a butternut squash has more of a yellow color kind of like a spaghetti squash well, a little oranger than spaghetti squash, but not as orange as this. So I really, I love butternut squash. And so I thought these ones looked really good and might be a really good pumpkin replacement too. Even though I've grown some pumpkin that's done very well for us in the past. Uh, just like anything else, I still like mixing it up, trying new things, and just seeing what does best for us. And then a few other things. Uh, I'm going to be 
doing this year is trying to grow stevia from seed again. Now these are things I'll be starting later in the greenhouse just directly in pots not in the house like I'm doing with this year with the tomatoes and peppers uh, and then I might do the bee balm and or the milkweed. I want to learn a little bit more about these. They are beautiful and I like the fact that they attract things to our garden. There's just, when it comes to medicinal uses, there are some, but I know with both of these, you have to be a little bit more careful. So I want to do more research before I uh, plant too much of this stuff and take up a lot of precious garden space. So anyway, that's it for seeds and gardening for this video. Now I want to go on to some other things. Now, a, a while back, I did a couple of different videos about emergency lighting or different light sources for when you have power outages and whatever. And when I did that last one that I'll link to right here where I was showing the lantern that I also forgot to show has a hazard light, a red flashing hazard light that goes around it. Anyway, I always forget stuff. But while I went to find the puck lights to put in the link in the video so people could check them out, I saw these and thought they were really cool and thought I would give them a try. So what we did, and they are super bright. They are super bright. They take as many batteries as those little puck lights, three uh, AAA batteries. We always get the Amazon ones. You can get both the rechargeable ones and just the regular throwaway ones. They just have the best price. I really like their batteries. But anyway, um, and Patrick went ahead and installed a couple of these in the bathroom so far. I may still consider, I think I'm gonna put one of these in our pantry, um, but not in our bedroom. I'll leave the puck light. This is a much brighter than the puck light, but the puck light's bright enough for, you know, our bedroom if you're just needing to get in there and grab an article of clothing or even just light a lamp to put in there. But the thing that's cool about these is you can install it right next to your other light switch, your electric light switch, and then you actually have a switch that goes on and it is very bright. I was thinking Patrick could even use uh, at least a couple of these out in his shop because he's had the power go out on him when he's in the shop when it's been dark and it's like totally black out there when the power goes out. So uh, I think he should probably put a couple of these. But anyway, I bought them in a four pack for a really good price and I'm going to go ahead and link to those below. I'm pretty happy with them. I think they're very cool. But anyway, here's a couple of pictures of the lights installed in the bathrooms right next to the switches. And I'll probably eventually remove the puck lights that I stuck in there and then find a new place for those because the puck lights are still very handy, especially if you want them in a place where you need some emergency lighting but don't need it quite as bright as this because this is pretty bright. And then I wanted to show these. I've been getting this really great homespun yarn from a lady that follows me on here and on Facebook, and we've been doing some bartering. So I've been bartering for some yarn from her and then making things. Some of them I'm selling on the store, but these ones, this is a beautiful variegated yarn, and uh, I made these ones for myself. I do have a pair of these up on the store, and I'm loving this alpaca. It is so comfy and warm. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I have several different uh, fingerless mitts on there. A couple of them are the alpaca that I got from her. So any of the alpaca, 100% alpaca mitts or anything that I make that you see on my store was made from the yarn that I bartered for from one of my subscribers. I mean, how great is that? So I actually have more yarn coming from her and I'm gonna, in exchange for the yarn, I'm gonna make her a pair of mitts as well in her in the color that she sends me and on the topic of the of the alpaca and the spinning and all that i do have a lot of people still coming in and asking me have you started using your spinning wheel yet remember the spinning wheel i bought like two years ago on ebay love it i'm glad i have it no matter what happens i will never get rid of it because i do plan to someday sit down and really take some time to learn however not long after we got the spinning wheel uh people started putting in skirt orders. You know, they were just private skirt orders and they were constant. I had to have a long running list of skirt orders going on because I was constantly doing that. And then, and so I was so busy with that. And so between that and then ma making aprons and making soaps and starting to sell those and making the skin cream and selling those and then the garden and then all the other projects. Oh, and making YouTube videos is a full-time job, people, especially if you're, we're back to doing five or six videos a week now, that is definitely a full-time job. So yes, I just have simply not had the time to sit down and really take the time to learn, but I really 
really want to. Um, I believe when the time's right, it'll happen. Just like finding that perfect pre piece of property or sitting down and writing the book that people keep asking about. But right now I have two full-time jobs at least. <laughs> and I, cert I just don't have the time to do that. I have to focus on the things that are bringing income into the house, such as you know the different things, you know, the crochet things, the sewed things, the the skin cream, the soaps, uh, everything else, and the things that Mr. Rain makes as well. I'm the one that still does all the digital work on the computer, getting the pictures taken, getting the things listed on the store. So it, it's all very time consuming, and and that's where you know that's where we're making our money. So that's where our focus is. But eventually, I will learn how to spend. I will. It could be years from now, but it will happen. <laughs> Because I really want to. It just, it seems like so much fun to me and I'm really excited about being able to do it. A couple more things I want to talk about before I finish up this video is this is one of my more recent floral vinegars and I just thought it was so beautiful the way it turned out. I had to refill this bottle for, um, that I keep in the bathroom for washing my hair with. And so I'll go ahead and insert a picture here because I never think the lighting in here does things justice. And uh, anyway, so this is what I'm using. I don't remember all the flowers that are in this. I know it's rose for sure because of the color. I believe I have calendula and pansies in here as well. And it just, it ha oh, and lavender for sure. It, Cause I can smell the lavender. The lavender overpowers everything. And it just, it has a beautiful smell as well as a color. And so if you haven't got into making vinegar at all, um, I recommend, I'll link to my last vinegar making video, which was where I just made plain calendula vinegar. And that one was just really great too. And I recommend giving it a try. It's so cheap and so easy to make your own. And the way I'm doing it now, and that's why I say my most recent, because I have a lot of vinegar videos out there, but the way I'm doing it now has been the best. It's just a few different little tweaks that's been yielding a much stronger vinegar, a much better result all the way around, and I love it. It works for so many things. And I do make the fruit ones too. The fruit ones I use for, and other herb ones, the herb ones, like if I'm using peppermint or cedar boughs or juniper, those are typically used for cleaning. And then the other ones, like fruit ones, like the apple and the peach and so on and so forth, I will use more for cooking and baking and different things like that. And then right here is my blackberry grape wine. So this is a wild picked blackberries and grapes from our own garden. And it had turned out, I have to rack it one more time. So after I, I do the final rack, I'll take a picture of it in a glass so you can get a better, uh, a better idea of the color of it. But I did take a small taste of it. You know I don't drink, but I still have to taste it to see how it turns out. And I tell you what, this is so good. And... Uh, I definitely be making more. And if you're interested in learning how to make your own, I have a series on wine making. My way may be considered kind of crude. It's just the way I do it based on what I have on hand. And I pretty much just didn't do a lot of research into it. I just started making my own wine. And uh, my, the last couple batches I made have turned out amazing. And so anyway, um, you can check out that series right up here. And I will also be doing a video down the road on the uses of wine. First, I'll be talking both about why I personally choose not to drink, not to, you know, just drink wine as a, you know, a, as a beverage, you know, just for enjoyment, but why I make it and the many uses of it, because there are quite a bit of uses. And I, I can go through quite a bit just using it and stuff from extracts to baking to sauteing and so much more. So be watching for that video down the road. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed my this and that video for today. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.